Spider-Man 2 might just be my favorite Spidey game of all time, but not because of the reasons you think. Insomniac actually added some pretty insane settings this time around that will let you pretty much fine-tune how you web sling around New York. From pure physics-based traversal to other awesome things you might have missed, you're probably never going to go back to the default settings after watching this video. Kicking things off with the swing steering assistance, by default this is set to 10, case in which the game has maximum interference with how you web sling around the city, constantly trying to compensate and avoid any interruptions. So what you will notice, especially if you web sling between two parallel buildings, is that Spidey almost never gets pulled off too much to the sides, and instead he's kind of almost stuck right there in the dead middle. Which I guess is pretty smooth, but at the same time also completely unrealistic. Another thing you will notice is that if you do dive bombs towards the ground, you can still pull off a very last second web line and completely avoid any collisions, especially with the ground vehicles. Which again is done by kind of compensating and introducing some of that general floatiness that you might have noticed when you're doing web slinging from the ground level. But if you instead pull that all the way down to zero and remove it, the only thing remaining is purely physics based web slinging, which is also a lot more involved and a lot more fun to play with. The first thing you will notice is that as you attach lines to buildings, Spidey gets dragged a lot more to that side as well. The bigger the angle and the further away a building is, the more drastic the pullover effect is going to be, to the point that you kinda have to fight a little bit with the physics to keep your character centered, something that previously the game automatically did for you. An even bigger one is going to be that you can no longer pull off web lines the very last second and instead much much sooner than that, Otherwise, you're just going to hit off vehicles on the ground level and completely interrupt your web lines. However, my recommendation is to keep this between 1 and 3, and that's because it's going to keep the majority of the physics-based movement, but also help just slightly with the collisions on the ground level so that you can still pull off, for example, cool tricks while closer to the streets. It's just something that I like a lot more and it totally makes a difference while still not interfering too much with the physics. Another really interesting one is the slow corner time scale, which by default should be set to off. So in this case, what it does is that it doesn't slow down your speed as you use your web lines to turn off a steep corner, but this is going to require obviously having unlocked that ability in the shared skill line. So what you will notice in this case is that as I'm doing the speed boost, for example, I still have the same momentum and speed when I pull over the corner and go to the other side, which can be a bit confusing at times and might cause collisions if, for example, right at the other side, maybe there's an obstacle or a big sign or another building that you might hit off, and it generally can contribute, like the tooltip says, to a bit of confusion when trying to do it fast. However, if you turn it on, now your game is going to slightly slow down time when you do it at these corners. So for example, how you just saw right here, the speed at which the game goes to is slightly reduced, about 30 to 50%, I would say, but it generally makes it a lot easier for you to kind of adapt the situation and maybe pull off a corner or avoid any obstacles on the way, which if you go with the physics-based movement, you might want so that, yeah, you just have better reactions all the way. Now, speaking of slow motion, I really appreciate games that give you many options. Well, Spider-Man 2 lets you change game speed from the game menu between 100 all the way down to 30%. So this is how 30% looks, by the way. It's basically completely slow motion, but it's also very cinematic. If you want to film some cool tricks or just pull off a montage, this can help a ton with that. But it kind of goes a bit beyond that too as it can also help you a ton in some of the fast-paced mission moments. Let's say, for example, you're kind of chasing some of these drones, which on the very last few moments, yeah, they kind of tend to speed up quite a lot. So you can just pull this off and then have a much easier time navigating the tunnel and also avoiding any of the damage. It really trivializes them how easy it makes them. Another advantage is that you can just pull off tricks until the very last moment to get the maximum possible XP points and it can actually be done as a sort of farming method to get like 200 XP points by pulling off a ton of cool tricks on your way down from a very big building. Similarly, the chase assist also helps a ton with just 
limiting the top movement that you get for some of these vehicles whenever you chase them for example in the case of cars they no longer get a huge speed boost so that you have to just like follow them for long periods of time instead you will automatically go straight on them and can just finish it off right away especially with the qte autocomplete now if you want to fully go down that realism path another thing i recommend turning on is fall damage by default this is set to off which means you can jump from the tallest building without worry because on your way down you will just do this superhero landing instead however if you turn this on now you will get damaged if you jump from greater heights for example, in the case of jumping off the Avengers Tower, you guessed it, on your way down, you're going to absolutely smash into that pavement, completely taking Spidey out and probably having him in a trip to the hospital. So I went ahead, did a bunch of tests to see exactly where that safe zone is, and it's basically at around the maximum point you reach with a charge jump, plus minus two more building stories, so you can safely jump from that distance without worrying about any fall damage. If you go higher than that, like for example about 10 to 15 stories, this is when you start seeing some damage. It's just going to be slightly, but still quite noticeable as you will see portions of your HP slightly going away as you hit the pavement. And then if you go like double that, yeah, that's going to be a lot more pronounced to the point that you will get a massive damage to your HP, pretty much requiring more than one focus meter to heal up plus if you dive bomb regardless of the distance you're going to face plant right into the pavement and still get a ton of damage so you also have to be careful about that now one setting i recommend being careful about is the dodge slash parry window and just keep that to default you might be tempted looking at this comparison to go and think that the increased version is better but in reality it achieves the opposite so what happens in normal gameplay situations is that you see the enemy attack, it takes a bit longer, you press the parry or dodge button, and the only thing that happens is that you pressed it way too soon, the attack has yet to land, and instead will land right after doing that parry or that dodge and still getting hit in the face. It's exactly like the annoying delayed effects from Dark Souls or Elden Ring. If you ever played those games, it's exactly that situation. Just keep it to default, the normal ones are good as it is, Plus, the enemy attacks are very telegraphed and easy to see from miles away. At number 5, if you ever hated especially these puzzles where you have to perfectly squeeze L2 and R2, then you can go ahead, turn these off as well as any other quick time events in the settings menu and instead have them to auto-complete. So this is something that you can do even in the middle of one of these puzzles and then the game will automatically finish them off for you. This is very helpful with some of the side activities, but also with, for example, any other quick time event. Let's say, for example, you do car chase scenes. In this case, you no longer have to press square or circle. Instead, Spidey will just do everything automatically, which I guess is not as engaging, but you can always just switch between these however you like them. And finally, there are a couple of secret visual effects that you can only unlock via a certain set of suits. So in this case, if you're like me and did not unlock the Into the Spider-Verse suits for Pete and Miles, you likely missed out on the fact that you can get a comic SFX and a film style animation in the visual settings. So the film style animation setting is just going to introduce the same one from Miles Morales where you will see um, lower general frame rates for the character movements while everything else around you is the same so kind of giving it almost like a comic style animation effect which is pretty nice and again just like in the previous game meanwhile the comic s effects just like what the name implies it displays those visual comic book style um, well sound effects on the screen whenever you take down enemies it's mostly just for enemy takedowns but i guess it's pretty nice adds a bit of flavor and honestly i'm going to probably continue playing off with them despite me campaigning a bit more for realism in this video and that is pretty much it with the video totally let me know down below in the comments have you gone with more web slinging realism or with a lot more assistance in the meantime totally check out some of my other marvel spider-man videos including some of the best suits to unlock that are secret plus a bunch of really awesome tips and tricks to help you a ton with combat thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video